Welcome, everyone. My name is Kyan Krippendorf, and welcome to the next session of the series from Business Ecosystem Alliance, um, Making Sense of Ecosystems. Um, our guest is Martin Reeves. I'll tell you a little bit about him, and I'll do a short summary of kind of what we've been hearing so far. Um, and then the objective here is to tap Martin's mind to help us pull things together and make sense of what we've all heard. Uh, Martin is a managing director and senior partner at BCG's San Francisco office, and he's the chairman of the BCG Henderson Institute, a research institute um, that explores topics within but beyond the world of business as well. He's ranked by Thinkers 50 as one of the 50 most influential management thought leaders in the world, co-author or author of several great books, including uh, The Imagination Machine, Inspiring the Next Game, and uh, one of my personal favorites, Your Strategy Needs a Strategy. Um, and so we're thrilled to have him um, join us for the topic. He's also published several influential articles based on uh, research uh, that he and his uh, uh, institute have done on ecosystems uh, in MIT Sloan and other places. Um, so, Martin, I'm going to open up to you in a moment, but just sort of to, 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 to kind of set the contents, um, we got to interview uh, and leading up to this and during the last two days, some people have spent a lot of time thinking about and practicing ecosystem-based strategy competition. Uh, people like Tiffany Bova, Jonathan Nee, um, Kevin Nolan of GE Appliances, um, Felix oberholzer Gee, Rita McGrath. Participants can hear those recordings also. Um, they were pre some of them were pre-recorded. Um, and just generally kind of the, the, the big themes that we heard from those are, um, you know, ecosystems are not new. And there is some question about why are they increasingly important now and are they? So that would be one of my questions for you. Um, that you know, when do you need an ecosystem seems to be when the value that you ultimately need to deliver to the end user requires lots of players. Um, that, um, that the fundamental sources of advantage when we're competing within ecosystems doesn't seem necessarily to change a lot. There's still scale is important, but that might come from network effects instead of um, you know, economic scale. Um, captivity is important, um, but not just customer captivity, but other player captivity. Um, however, it does seem that some people talk about there does need to be a shift in your strategic approach if you uh, are going to be good at competing in a world of ecosystems, um, a strong customer focus and thinking about that end user, uh, being able to choose and manage relationships is a key capability. Um, maybe this requires a new kind of leadership, you know, one that doesn't require telling people what to do, but a little bit of letting go and creating the context for people to act, not maximizing value extraction, not trying to take a too big a share of the pie, um, and then putting in place the appropriate systems and rules that kind of remove the friction. So that was sort of my very brief summary of um, the six or seven hours of interviews that are leading up to this. Um, so, um, Martin, you've spent a lot of time thinking about ecosystems. Um, I just want to open up with what's your definition of a business ecosystem? Um, yeah, well, I, uh, nice to be with you, Ken, to have this conversation. You, um, you know, I want to be a little cautious in giving you a definition because um, ecosystems, it's, it's an interesting area because practice is leading theory. So I don't want to give you some very normative definition. Um, I think we're in the process of figuring out how they work and how they're changing. Uh, but my uh, broad definition is a group of companies that collaborates to produce a, a, a common offering. Um, and in that sense, it's not entirely new, but there are some new elements of that that perhaps we can dig into. Okay. Okay. Um, and so what, what's your opinion? Um, you know, we're talking a lot about business ecosystems fairly recently, but they're not new. Um, is this really something that is surging in importance um, or is this, you know, uh, overplayed? Um, well, we're certainly talking about it more. Um, sure. uh, in recent years about, um, we, we've done some semantic analysis and annual reports and so on. And um, uh, so the, the, the term is 13 times more popular than it, than it was um, 10 years ago. So we're certainly mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, I think we might be talking about it too much. Um, in the sense that I've seen the word applied to product portfolios, you know, the portfolio ecosystem, I've seen it applied to cultures, 
Um, this one company defines something called a happiness ecosystem, which sort of means culture. Um, uh, but but actually, um, th there are some new elements to ecosystems. Um, I mean, one of them is um, it's a new structural choice. Um, uh, so tr traditionally, your structural choices uh, for a business system were a vertically integrated company um, or a, a, a linear stable supply chain or at the other end of the spectrum, a market and a, a digital ecosystem is for somewhere between the two. Um, I think we had did, I think we had ecosystems uh, before we had the explosion of digital technology in about uh, from about 1989. Um, but certainly the reduction of transaction costs for digitization and the um, and the digital ecosystem makes the coordination of the complexity involved in an ecosystem a, a lot easier. So that's mm -hmm. uh, that's a new facilitator, if you like. Um, I think there are some things that are not entirely new, but very important and differ from the classical strategic canon in terms of uh, mindsets and concepts. So, you know, the idea of dynamic strategy, not entirely new, but very important for ecosystems. Uh, ecosystems are constantly changing. Um, I think um, an external mindset, you know, I think the most minimal model of strategy for a company is um, the company, its product its customers and the investors. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas I think ecosystems is a much more externalized concept. So it's much more akin to and related to uh, open uh, uh, open competition. Um, I think the network effects and the scale effects are not new, um, mm -hmm. but they can be very extreme for ecosystems. Um, so there are some there are some new 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 elements. The final element I'd add is ecosystems are not a panacea. So we I think we have a tendency in strategy to to pile onto the new concept and treat it as if it's a panacea. I think there are situations where you don't use an ecosystem. Um, so my own um, sort of framing concept is contingent strategy. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what the book about um, your strategy needs a strategy is all about choosing the right approach to strategy uh, for the right situation and the right uh, the right challenges. But certainly ecosystems have some new elements and they can be very powerful under certain circumstances. So, um, you know, as you're describing maybe ecosystems as sort of a, maybe a tool or a way to implement a strategy, I'm just wondering how do ecosystems fit into strategy? And I guess what I'm right. kind of thinking is there's this, there's this question of whether M&A is a strategy or part of a strategy, or is it a way to achieve a strategy? Right. I know that seems sort of a hyper the theoretical question, but I think it's important for practitioners. Um, well, I think I think ecosystems are, are are hard in some ways. So you've got to have a a, a problem worthy of an ecosystem. Um, so clearly, if you are um, have a network of a, of a thousand suppliers as part of your ecosystem, a network of complementers, then you're relinquishing a degree of control. Um, the, the 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 platform investment and scaling tends to require investment uh, several. Uh, several years in, a, in, a, in advance of payback. Um, um, so I think the first thing you need with an ecosystem is a, uh, is, 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 is a problem um, or, or an opportunity that's, uh, uh, that's big enough. Um, I think ecosystems require a certain degree of modularity a certain, in, a, in a sense it's, uh, um, uh, so you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't make a nuclear reactor with an ecosystem because mm -hmm. an integrated design that is um, you know, extremely reliable is probably important. You probably wouldn't make an ecosystem to make a cup of tea uh, because it's, it's, it's trivial to coordinate buying the, uh, the components of a cup of tea separately and assembling them yourself. Um, but you might for something like, um, uh, something like an, I, uh, an iPhone. Um, it tends to, um, ecosystems when they're successful tend to scale very rapidly. So if you're a challenger looking to scale a new disruptive business model, um, that, that can be a situation um, uh, uh, that, that uh, facilitates ecosystems. Um, I think one of the defining aspects of, um, of digital ecosystems is their massive ability to manage complexity dynamically and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and indirectly. So if um, I, I think the iPhone is a perfect example of that or a smartphone um, where you have many capabilities involved, um, uh, many, many components, many materials. I mean, that degree of complexity would be very hard to coordinate. And even if you could coordinate it by traditional means, um, you probably wouldn't want to do it statically because you need an evolvable system. So evolvability is another key aspect of ecosystem. So those are some of the situations where where I think ecosystems um, can be uh, can be can be very powerful, um, but I mean I I I 
I think there are four other, in my view, um, canonical approaches to strategy that are appropriate under other circumstances. There is still classical um, plan-based strategy for very, uh, for very stable industries and situations. Uh, I think there's an um, adaptive strategy, the level of a, an individual company. Um, I think there is a visionary and entrepreneurial strategy um, where you're creating new spaces. Uh, written about that in my, my book, The Imagination Machine. Mm -hmm. And then it's often not treated like a strategy, but I think there is um, um, about a third of companies at any time are undergoing some major adjustment with some major change programs, a transformational strategy. The stakes are extraordinarily high. Most companies fail at large scale change. So I treat that as a, a strategy option too. So if you like ecosystems are a new, uh, a new structural option, a new governance option for um, um, among other options um, mm -hmm. that, uh, that match to some elements of the uh, modern business context. So then let's uh, kind of uh, put ourselves in the mind of a business owner and could be an entrepreneur or it could be someone, a product leader in a, in a larger enterprise. And they assess and they decide, hey, an ecosystem is the right approach. I would normally build this all in-house, deliver it with my sales force and with all the other components and associated plugins and things. And I would deliver it, but um, it's not a risk. I'm not building um, uh, a nuclear power plant, so I don't have that risk. And, um, um, and it's not super simple because I do need other components and collaborators would make it easier for me to focus on what I'm great. So let's do an ecosystem. Um, what, what does that look like? How, 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 what, what decisions do they make that are different than last year when they were going to you know, build it and launch it themselves? Right. Well, I think the first thing you've got to ask yourself is, um, do you have an, a, an ecosystem worthy problem? You know, are you prepared to um, uh, invest for several years to build a platform and, um, uh, uh, and and is the is the opportunity big enough and so on? Um, does it have the characteristics that, that, that lend itself to this sort of solution? Um, I think the second um, question you have to ask yourself, um, because in, in in my experience, most companies uh, and the many companies that are interested in uh, digital ecosystem now, nowadays automatically jump to the assumption that they are the orchestrator of the ecosystem. Well, of course, arithmetically that arithmetically that can't work. Um, right. You know, if there's, very if there's small one, ecosystem. If there's, if, there's, if there's one orchestrator for, uh, you know, every thousand companies um, in a, an ecosystem, then, um, you know, most of those companies are probably wrong. So I think you have to ask yourself, why would anyone want to join my club? Um, I think the third thing you need to ask yourself is, um, you know, what capabilities and mindsets do we need to build? Because we know that um, a, a product to uh, ecosystem or a product to platform switch is certainly possible. Um, there are companies that have achieved that, John Deere, um, uh, mm -hmm. Apple Computer, but not trivial um, because the mindset is quite different. For instance, the mindset towards moving to a, a model of partial and indirect control, the, this very um, external orientation, this, uh, uh, this sort of um, perspective of competition, the fact that what's going on is partially competitive and partially uh, collaborative. There are, and, and of course, the technological prowess involved. Um, so one has to ask oneself, you know, what, what capabilities? Um, I think one has to look at the seriously at the role of being a complementer in other people's ecosystems, possibly multiple ecosystems rather than the orchestrator. And then I think one has to um, not rely too much on, um, uh, on, on rote recipes. I mean, one of the no things we know about ecosystems is they're constantly changing. Mm -hmm. um, so we did a big study where we looked at... Um, um, we tried to connect, correct for sort of survivor bias. We, we, we may look at uh, companies like Amazon and Apple and think that ecosystems are a slam dunk and the, you know, the winner takes all. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, what the data says, uh, if you go back and you trace all of the ecosystems that failed, it says number one, that 85% of uh, would-be ecosystems fail, uh, okay. which is quite a similar number to tr traditional startups. So it's not a slam dunk. <laughs> um, it says that, um, uh, not surprisingly, not everybody be, can be an orchestrator. Um, it says that actually um, one paper we wrote was called um, Winner Takes All Sometimes for a While. Um, <laughs> so sometimes you don't get to take all. You, but, and, mm -hmm. and also, um, actually, ecosystems, they do have very strong network effects, but they can fail and often do fail if they don't keep evolving uh, because they're dynamic and 
and, uh, and, 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 and path, and path dependent. Um, so therefore, uh, you know, I don't think there's any sort of static best recipe for an ecosystem. I think actually um, coherence, in other words, are your choices, um, for instance, you know, degree of openness of the ecosystem, uh, are your choices uh, coherent? And also, do they evolve across time? Because trying to build that initial uh, platform and then evolving the platform um, and then seeing off threats and then the sort of trying to manufacture lock-in effects and so on, they're very different challenges at the different stages of uh, evolution of an ecosystem. Fascinating. And uh, Stuart put a link to um, one of your publications, I think, you know, talks about this path dependency into the chat. Um, I've got uh, many other questions. We're starting to get questions on, on chat. Um, if you want to ask questions, um, some people are asking directly of me in chat, but you can post them for everyone to see. Um, yeah, it'd be great, great to get some questions from the audience. Otherwise, yeah. I, I've I got like three or four uh, okay. here. They're being sent directly to me. That's why, yeah, it'd be great for Martin to be able to see them as well. So um, some other sessions, here's the first question. Um, some other sessions suggest that entrepreneurs are better at understanding and developing ecosystems. Is this true? And what are the ramifications for big corporations? Um, well, it's it's uh, true in a sense and untrue in another sense. So I, I, th I think entrepreneurs are typically um, reliant on dynamic collaborations with uh, with others. They're they're modest about um, uh, what they control. They're highly flexible because they need to be to survive. So in this sense, the the intrinsic um, uh, uh, dynamism and uh, and, 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 and creative orientation and flexibility of entrepreneurs are advantages. On the other hand, to, to really build a, uh, a dominant platform requires a lot of patient investment. And in some ways, um, uh, large companies um, are very well suited to that because they may have the financial patience. Um, I was talking to Kai Fuli, the AI um, uh, uh, expert the other day, and we were discussing the, um, the paradox that um, um, and we were talking about AI, but it also applies to ecosystems. Um, in some ways, if you could parachute the A team and the right mindset into um, into into uh, into incumbent large enterprises, um, they would win every time. If you think about it, they have the financial resources, um, uh, they they have the uh, ability to invest uh, patiently, they have the expertise, they have the um, the, the domain expertise, they have the uh, the relationships with customers they have the brand uh, mm -hmm. but actually we know in practice it's uh, it's it's very hard um so a lot of things come down to um this ability to shift mindsets on uh, mind, mindset so uh, we don't often associate change management with ecosystems but in some ways to avail oneself of the advantages and to use, leverage one's capabilities mm -hmm. to be, to do this sort of product to platform switch it's actually a, 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 a massive change management problem an internal change that's, that's something i'm researching and writing about currently um does your answer from stefan over here does, does your answer just now change if we talk about entrepreneurship versus entrepreneurs versus startups um he just had a clarification question um yeah help me with that uh, yeah, so, with, so i asked i asked i opened up i asked uh, do entrepreneurs do it better than large companies yes. um and he and as i was asking that he typed in entrepreneurs or startups um I, right. I, I, I assume we're talking about this. I, th I thought we were talking about the same thing. I don't know if that um, changed. Yeah, I, thought, I, I was actually yeah. I, I was yep. actually equating the two, the, the two equating things. The two. Yep. Um, right. The other point I'd make here, by the way, is that um, whatever the answer to any questions we answer today, we shouldn't assume that they are static answers because the uh, actually the whole um, uh, notion, the whole uh, phenomenon of ecosystems, we know it's already changing. So, for example. Um, uh, there was a period in time when there were very few ecosystems. There was a period in time where most um, uh, venture investments were uh, investments in, in the orchestrators of digital ecosystems. Interesting. Um, we're starting to see actually a takeoff in investments and, and returns and relative activity in complementers to ecosystems. And we're seeing the first signs of uh, B2B ecosystems and and uh, public um, public sector uh, ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the answers to the thing, you know when we're talking about today we we think about sort of startups and large and large companies B2C ecosystem plays. Um, this whole phenomena will will evolve over time. I think I think also we've lived through um, the last in the last ten years we've seen um, 
the dominance in particular geographies and domains of ecosystems um, that didn't really compete with each other. I think mm. another inevitability is that the is that the global dominant ecosystems, but um, companies like Alibaba and Amazon, will be, begin to compete with each other, and that's that's a whole new game. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're talking about the yeah geographically defined ecosystem. It could be the uh, German automotive ecosystem and the Japanese, for example. Yeah. Um, and I would um, expect so the question. logic. I would expect the logic of, for instance, B two B ecosystems to be rather different. So, if you remember, in the early days of the uh, uh, e commerce revolution, uh, we we were talking about verticals and horizontals, and pretty quickly we stopped talking about verticals because it emerged that um, horizontal industry spanning uh, ecosystems mm -hmm. seem to be right in most circumstances. Uh, in other words, not just economies of scale, but economies of scope seem to be uh, seem to be the winning proposition. Yes. Um, for B2B ecosystems, there's probably a much more compelling logic I, uh, I conjecture for, for, for vertical ecosystems because the relationships, uh, uh, the, the, the products, the domain expertise is, is, is much more um, industry and relationship specific. So that could be a different game again. Could you so illustrate think, that? Think, if you mind illustrating that point with a, you know, an example of a vertical and a... Um... Um, well, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're supplying industrial goods, I mean, supposing you're supplying, you know, semiconductor ma manufacturing equipment or something like this, you're dealing with um, not thousands of, of buyers, you're probably dealing with, you know, 10. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the equipment is highly specialized. Um, so a company like Alibaba Amazon might, may say that, well, consumer products, it's all just information. You know, we're, we're not in any particular industry. Um, well, the bar to say that is much higher for a for a for a complex industrial good, got it. Um, industrial purchasing is 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 is, is much more uh, relationship driven. Mm -hmm. um, uh, reliability, uh, the integration and reliability of the components is is um, uh, ten, ten, tends to be much much more important. Um, and also the IP barriers can be mm -hmm. uh, can can be a mm -hmm. lot higher. So it could That's be uh, an entirely different logic. So I think when we when we when we talk about ecosystem singular, you know, one one phenomenon, one set of rules. I, I think we must remain open minded to how that will evolve um, over that time. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's exciting. Um, so there's a question here from Rada. Um, is um, can you share a little bit more around the the software experience platform that you need to get into an ecosystem, and maybe any comments around governance? Um, well, I, th I think, um, so if you want to be a digital platform-based business, if you, if you want to orchestrate um, uh, many, you know, thousands of, um, of, of customers and uh, complementers or suppliers with a digital platform, I, I, I think obviously the most direct thing is that you need, um, you need the technical skills to build the platform. Um, you, um, you also need the financial capacity to do that ahead of, ahead of others. So first mover effects, I think, are very important for, 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 for ecosystems. Um, um, I think you, you need a, a, a very different mindset, um, if, if we can include mindset in software, mm. because, okay. um, uh, because managers are used to managing. Um, I, I was... Uh, I can talk about this because it's public knowledge, but we were invited to by Alibaba to help them to codify uh, their their knowledge of, of of ecosystems, and we wrote an article with them called "The Self Tuning Company," which was a codification <laughs> of their practice. The reason that they um, they asked us to do that is that indeed practice was leading theory, even inside Alibaba. So, in their view, they were a very sophisticated player in, in ecosystems and ecosystems of ecosystems, but they hadn't got fully codified uh, what they were doing. So in the process of codification, uh, we looked at what they were doing. We looked at their rules of thumb. We tried to codify. And one of their rules of thumb is, um, is, is quite amusing. I mean, literally translated from Chinese, it was never let a never let an MBA near a, near a marketplace. <laughs> and um, and I, I thought it was a translation mistake. I asked the interpreter to sort of repeat. And no, indeed, they were saying never let an MBA near a marketplace. And so the, the idea of that is that managers are trained to manage. And, um, uh, and of course, the, the beauty of, um, of a digital platform is that it can handle a lot of complexity dynamically uh, because it's a, an adaptive mechanism that re doesn't require direct management. So um, you know, the major uh, consumer uh, ecosystems don't manage each transaction. They don't manage pricing directly. These are all... Um, rapid 
um, uh, multi-dimensional uh, algorithmic loops. Um, mm -hmm. So when the managers try to go in and you know engineer the different pieces of the platform, rather than building a platform that can uh, have sort of auto catalysis or self tuning, as the word we came up with, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you know you 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 get into problems of the clash between the mental software and the and and, and, the, the, and the technological software. Technology. Fascinating. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit here because we're getting a lot of mm. questions, and I want to make sure that um, we're getting the questions to you that people want to hear about. So um, Johan Wong, um, he's asking about climate change. So mm. what global right. ecosystem challenges and opportunities are you seeing or advising on to address meaningful and impactful climate you know, impact on climate change? Right. There seem to be many networks. Right. Um, have so you seen I'm, any networks? Or, yeah, and so I'm very interested in this one because actually I'm originally a, um, a biologist and um, Right. So when, when somebody says ecosystem to me, I think of, um, you know, Tansley, the biologist and his uh, coining of the term ecosystem in the, in the 1920s. And um, so I just actually wrote a piece that I had a lot of fun with called ecosystems for ecosystems. And the idea is, can ecosystems help us with um, our massive and complex collective action problems connected with things like climate change? Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my tentative conclusion is, they can, and they are not currently. Um, so the mm. idea is that, um, so currently I think companies are enamored with net zero goals as a, um, a net carbon emissions neutrality, net of yeah. offsets um, at the level of each company. Um, but I think um, logically um, optimizing uh, for net, uh, for carbon neutrality at the level of each company cannot work collectively because the problem is that my net zero may undermine your net zero. Um, if I'm a, if for instance, if I'm a car manufacturer and I start making my cars out of aluminium, they'll mm -hmm. be lighter and they'll consume less fuel. Um, but it may increase uh, energy intensive aluminium production somewhere else in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So actually we need a collective solution. It's a very complex coordination problem because every change has ripple effects. Um, what technologies do we have um, for um, uh, for such dynamic uh, coordination and learning and evolvability, digital ecosystems. Um, mm -hmm. Now, currently, um, uh, public um, public good uh, applications of ecosystems are fairly minimal. There are there are some I can talk about if you like, but um, uh, 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 but I, I'm 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 optimistic because um, I think the technology in industry overall has been. Um, very successful, obviously, in the last 10 years, but now has a number of um, now has a need to prove that it's contributing towards the, the public good. It begins to get into the uh, the prospects of being um, regulated. It needs to be more mm -hmm. sensitive to its reputation. So I think there's a there's a great put together here of complex collective action problems, digital ecosystems for the public good and the and the interests of, of, of big tech. It's a speculation, but I, I, mm -hmm. I would wish to see, and I think we could see action in that space. Yeah, have you, have you heard of this term, uh, global ownership theory? You, no, I uh, haven't. No, no. So, so this is uh, Chris Marcus, he's a professor at Dartmouth and he's at Oxford now. And um, it's not his term, but he kind of brings it in. Um, but the idea is that uh, when you have an investor or an insurer that both owns the, uh, uh, whatever the the you know the, the 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 petroleum company and the company that's insuring the you know fallout and um, who's building homes near water right then you sort of start taking these externalities and putting putting them under so that's maybe where we're seeing some uh, more force or action from the investor side or the or the public market side right and also the the global scope of digital platforms is important too because. Uh -huh. um, just as this uh, global, warming, global warming cannot be solved as, as a collection of individual optimizations at the level of each company, um, neither can it be solved um, at the level of each, uh, at each country. We need, we need global solutions for, for many reasons. Um, you know, free riders having a, a sufficient critical mass uh, uh, globally, um, uh, you know, adjusting for the very different um, situation of developing countries and, uh, and, and uh, the, the most developed economies. Um, and um, the, the largest digital platforms are more, you know, more global mm -hmm. than, any, uh, than, than, than any government, of course, any individual national government. Um, so this, 
This, this could be a very interesting, uh, interesting area. And, and there's a lot of, we're seeing a takeoff in, just as we saw a fashion for the word ecosystems in annual reports, we're seeing a, a takeoff of interest in the, in the concept amongst um, uh, public sector and nonprofit organizations too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, fascinating. Um, there's, there's a question here from um, Nikita. Um, and I, it has to do, I think, with two, two things. One is when you're setting up an ecosystem, uh, how much influence do you have in setting the rules? Um, and also the role of complementers, um, kind of initiators and complementers slash followers. Um, so I'll read it to you. Um, could you please elaborate more on um, what most, what are the most strategic choices that ecosystem complementers and followers need to make and how much power they have to influence ecosystem rules? Um, well, I think your first problem is, is attracting um, uh, the right customers and the right suppliers and mm -hmm. um, both. Um, so the company recruit, the Japanese company recruit talks about the ribbon model. It's like a bow tie where they're mm -hmm. at the center of the bow tie and they have to concentrate on both sides of the knot. They have to alternate their attention right. between building supply and building demand. Um, right. Uh, I, I, I think you, um, I think you need to have something that uh, qualifies you to be the, the orchestrator and, and that could be the brand uh, or it could be the, the, the technological prowess and the co coordination power of the, um, of, 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 of the platform, mm -hmm. or it could be the capacity to invest uh, patiently to, uh, to, disrupt a, to disrupt an industry. Um, then I think you've got to make sure that you're attracting uh, the right suppliers and the right users. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, if you want to uh, have an, have, have an ecosystem to build computers, I mean, clearly you're going to have to have a, the major, one of the major microprocessor manufacturers on board, otherwise you're not going to be viable. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in um, some more uh, social media type play, then uh, you've got to attract um, uh, the, the, the right uh, users. You, you, you've, you've got to, um, you know, you, you can destroy uh, the, the community, the value proposition, if there's too much uh, 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 abuse on the on, on the platform, so you've got to attract the right uh, the the right sort of people. Mm -hmm. um, you've um, I think you've got to decide which variables to control. So you uh, with you know a thousand offerings and uh, a thousand suppliers and millions of customers and a high degree of customization, you couldn't possibly control everything. Mm -hmm. um, typically, the most important variables to control are uh, are the brand, uh, the uh, the digital market platform, um, the, um, the feedback um, mechanisms. Um, so the, uh, for instance, the rater, the rater and the rater rating uh, uh, mechanisms. Um, uh, pricing you generally uh, leave to some sort of a, adaptive mechanism, but you control the adaptive mechanism rather than controlling the pricing directly. Okay. Um, and also the policies, the set of initial policies, which by the way, often often reverse over time. For example, can anyone join this ecosystem? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have multiple competing entities uh, on the ecosystem? Do you make it, uh, do you make it more exclusive? Uh, you have to decide that initial set of policies, but then you have to evolve it over time. There are many ecosystems that started off open and became closed or started off uh, closed and, 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 and became open. That is a bit, did that list just to come to you or do you have that list uh, in mind already? Um, a, I have the, really I have the list somewhere. I was, somewhere. I was just off the top of my mind, but oh, wow. I mean, I, Good. that was a very tough. I've never but heard again, it's, it's, um, so you know, I, I think, um, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things again, to be aware of that here though, is, is sort of, you know, eternal recipes. There is, there is, there is no eternal recipe. I, mm -hmm. I, I think an evolvable recipe and a coherent set of choices is probably more important than um, than imitating the recipes that you know happen to be the ones of the of, 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 of the current dominant platforms and and of course um, the the winner takes all effect the very strong network effects of an ecosystem mean that um, um, uh, this is something in biology called the sort of niche exclusion principle um, you know absolutely you know it's it's hard to have two or three um, ecosystems. Uh, uh, in in, a, in an industry, but it's ex especially hard to have ones that are identical. So, as an incumbent reacting to an to, to an ecosystem disruption, you'd be, I think, ill advised to um, imitate uh, the the recipe of the, of the ecosystem that you're challenging. 
Yeah, makes sense. Um, so there are a couple of questions here that uh, talk about management. You do, and you have just now mentioned kind of this mm-hmm. kind of a shift in mindset yes. of evolvability as an example. So um, from Janka and from Paul, um, h- how does the management role change in ecosystems? And from Paul, the leadership mindset for a well-established company, how does it shift from managing their own resources, direct resources, and can they really change? Um, so I think it's like management role and management mindset for a company that's shifting from, say, control towards ecosystem, uh, you know, uh, an ecosystem approach. What, what needs to change? Um, well, I, I think that's the changes that you need to make in managerial mindset um, for, for ecosystems. And there's a broader set of changes, which I call the... Um, the vectors of strategy change that apply that include those, but also other things that are changing in strategy. So starting with that broader context, um, I mean, I um, I've, I've focused on strategy for my uh, for my thirty years at uh, uh, with BCG, and um, relative to when I started, where strategy was um, equated with um, um, you know planning and uh, analysis and deduction and direct control and the the, the unit of analysis was always the individual company uh, relative to, to what I call classical strategy. Um, I think we're now seeing uh, for almost all companies um, strategy being more contingent, number one. Um, in other words, different types of strategy under different circumstances. Um, no lo- there's no longer a panacea, uh, uh, an approach to strategy that applies in all situations. So is it a classical strategy play, an entrepreneurial play, a, an ecosystems play. Secondly, it's a strategy is more dynamic. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, whatever was true at um, one moment in time is, uh, you know, not true the next moment um, to a dramatic degree, actually. So if you ask me, what is the single biggest change in, um, in, in strategy? It's the, it's the fade rate of competitive advantage. If you look at excess returns industry by industry, and you look at how fast the, qu- the top quartile of return decays to the mean, it's about mm-hmm. 10 times faster uh, than, in, uh, than in 1990. And that's primarily wow. because digital, A, because markets are more efficient in arbitraging away operational advantage, and, and, and B, uh, B, because, um, because information is, is replicated and uh, imitated very, uh, very easily. Um, you know, so dynamic, a dynamic mindset, um, uh, rather than sort of an annual or a five yearly strategy planning cycle. I think the third one, which is very much connected with ecosystems is uh, collaborativeness and openness. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, one of the most basic questions in strategy is strategy of what? Um, well, it used to be the strategy of the company. Now it's the strategy of the ecosystem of the company within the strategy of the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. You have to think at two levels. Um, I think um, strategy is more creative now, um, which is why I wrote the imagination machine. Um, uh, traditionally, we we didn't think a lot about the creative aspect of strategy uh, for two reasons. One, um, the the rate at which companies needed to renew themselves was relatively gentle, so we could coast for a whole career or a whole decade on you know one one business model. And secondly, um, uh, creating new approaches to, to strategy was the job for uh, for little startups that uh, big companies didn't didn't care about very much. Um, Mm-hmm. Uh, but now I think every company has needs to constantly self-renew. So the where does creativity come into strategy? That's that's important, and that also is an element of ecosystems. Um, I think um, uh, uh, you know we just had a question on global warming. The the, the the fifth vector of change in strategy and mindset I think is um, what I call the, the the context. In other words, um, it used to be that the only key variables were the the product and the and the competitors and the and the and the investors. But now, actually, um, um, social division, um, political risk, geopolitical risk, uh, uh, global warming, degradation of the environment, uh, these are, in some cases, more important. Uh, they have a bigger impact on the viability of the company than the, the, the narrow set of traditional variables. So they're part of strategy. They're not a bolt onto strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the sixth or seven is um, algorithmic. Uh, you know, typically we think about um, a couple of clever people with a spreadsheet in the strategy department, uh, you know, figuring out what the strategy is and then everybody else implements it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, a lot of what humans used to do with, uh, with pencil and paper is now done algorithmically. So we must ask ourselves, what is the role of algorithms in strategy? What are our strategies mm-hmm. for algorithmic platforms? Which is actually uh, another interesting emerging area of strategy. You know, how mm-hmm. do you 
how do you operate strategy on multiple timescales, the algorithmic timescale, the, the traditional timescale, and also yeah. these very slow contextual variables. And the last one is, um, is, is, is human. Now, typically we treat human resource problems as, as, as tactical or operational and not, um, and not strategic. Um, but if, if we have to reconceptualize the organization to be um, uh, a synergistic uh, blend of, of, of human and uh, algorithmic cognition um, in, in, uh, already today um, with some very algorithmically driven companies and increasingly over time, then actually that's a very hard thing. Um, mm -hmm. And the ability to do that becomes a competitive advantage to deploy human and machine cognition in the right uh, combination with the with the right mm -hmm. synergies. So strategy becomes more uh, more 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 human. So I think all of those coming back to the question, all of those are key shifts in the mindset of any company today when thinking about strategy. And and if you're a very traditional company, if you've been around for a hundred years in a in a product centric industry, you may have an inter a mindset that's really you know, almost the inverse of all of that. You may be thinking about the company, the industry, the product. You may have an yeah. annual planning cycle, a, a five mm -hmm. yearly planning cycle. You may not be thinking about these contextual variables. And the idea of algorithmic strategy may sound like science fiction to you. Well, that's mm. that's the that's the change management challenge that I talked about earlier. Right, right. Um, I think you just answered this question, but just to see if it brings anything else up. Um, oh, what kind of guiding principles do we need uh, to have an, e uh, an ecosystem methodology and mindset? I think you know you you addressed a, a good list there, but me asking that question does that bring anything else to mind that you would add to the these guiding principles? Um, well, I think I, I think I addressed the guiding yeah. principles. Maybe yeah. I could maybe come at it from another another angle, which is. Um, uh, which phenomena um, or characteristics of an environment where you are playing ecosystems uh, need to be uh, need, need need to be mastered? Um, so I think complexity would be one. Um, mm -hmm. So you 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 need to be better at coordinating complexity because in a way that's the one of the advantages of ecosystems. One of the one of the one of the needs and. Um, and, and, and this sort of traditional management can get in the way of that by trying to explicitly manage what is better managed by an adaptive marketplace. So um, I think you need to think about interdependence. Um, um, I, I think this sort of, you know, uh, uh, Ron Adner talks about, um, I, th I think he calls it ecosystem inversion. I, I think he was doing one of your sessions, you know, where your collaborator can become your competitor. So you have to think through that in advance and you have to have a, you have to have a plan for that. You have to understand how that complex dance works. Um, um, uh, I think you have to be more open to emergence. Um, so, um, you know, Mintzberg, I think, they coined the term, uh, you know, emergent strategy. You try to do one mm -hmm. thing and something else happens. And, um, you know, sometimes that's a good thing. And yes. then you have to be prepared to, you know, remobilize around the thing that you hadn't originally intended to do. Well, that's more or less the norm in ecosystem strategy. Yeah. Um, and um, and that's that's another application of digital technology here, really. The um, so so companies like Uber are, you know, everything is an A-B test using data. And you know, you're mm -hmm. constantly saying, let me test this hypothesis, let me test this hypothesis. You're not saying I've got a theory. The theory says that you should always do it this way, um, mm -hmm. which is how we might think about as tra the traditional management canon. Uh, this is actually testing. Um, uh, testing the managerial theories constantly. Um, okay. I think, um, um, yeah, controllability. This sort of, you know, what you manage, what you don't, what you don't manage. I mean, those are some of the some of the capabilities that you need to uh, append to some of those principles that we talked about. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a question here, and I'm I'm going to read it, but I'm going to kind of describe. What I'm, what I'm, what I think it means. Are, are there any different, other differences between innovation platforms and ecosystems besides the control and percentage of the value capture aspects? So I'm, what I'm kind of thinking of is that there is, I think, often a confusion between uh, a platform and an ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. You know, is 
is uh is is um in the united states is uh is amazon a, a platform or is it becoming an or is it an ecosystem you know is netflix an ecosystem um oh. so what, what are the differences yeah, between so let's, platform and ecosystem? i mean terminology is some to some extent arbitrary we can use different words to describe um in in different ways uh, but but um but i think uh you know, the, the way I think about these two concepts of platform and ecosystem, which are intimately related is, um, I think a, I think a, a digital ecosystem requires a, a platform in the sense of a, um, um, a you know, a self-adjusting um, uh, digital coordination mechanism. Um, um, there are ecosystems, traditional ecosystems, which predate the digital revolution uh, that didn't have that. Um, uh, and as a result, they were, uh, limited in their ability to handle um, uh, complexity. I'm thinking about, for instance, uh, you know, things like Nova Nordisk's um, building of, a, of an insulin market, a diabetes market in, in China, for example, where the condition was underdiagnosed, the doctors uh, were not trained, public awareness uh, was, uh, was very low, the treatment protocols didn't exist. And so, um, you know, Nova Nordisk, Nova Nordisk without a digital platform, um, collaborated with all of those different entities in the system to create, to not just sell into a pre-existing market, but to foster and create a market on the supply side and the demand side um, for um, uh, for its uh, for for its for its first product. So a, a digital platform helps um, extend right. the concept of an ecosystem, but it's not uh, it's not uh, it's, it's 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 not strictly necessary. That's interesting. Yeah, it makes me think of. Um... Maybe governments have been thinking this way for at least well-run governments been thinking about this for, for a long time. Yes. I think you know, like uh, in Thailand, the um, the the emergence or the creation of um, the medical tourism, you know, as an industry, yes. um, was probably put together. So maybe that's a yeah. I mean, in some ways, um, a, a a government, a country, is a good. Uh, is is one useful perspective on an ecosystem because a, an a, an ecosystem is. You know, has complexity, diversity, emergence cannot be shaped directly, but but you can, but you can shape it with uh, with, with with policies. You can have a strategic intention, um, uh, and, and 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 so it's more like a mini macro economy. Um, mm -hmm. So the now the interesting thing is because practice is leading theory, um, a lot of the successful companies may be doing the right things, probably are doing the right things, but they may not necessarily have those theories fully codified, which is why this Alibaba project that I talked about was so was so interesting to say, well, we may, we may be doing it right, but wouldn't it be even better if we could write down why we're doing it right, you know, the right. codification. Right. And, and, and within, the, within the domain of codifying how ecosystems work, I think we've got some new frontiers. So one of them is the governance of ecosystems. I think yep. even, the, even the most sophisticated ecosystem players are not fully explicit about the governance theories. And then the other one is the dynamics of ecosystems, which is, well, this may work today, but um, you know, when, when, uh, uh, when there's a, 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 a showdown between ecosystems and regulators, how will that work? What's the right, right way of regulating ecosystems? And when the major global ecosystems begin to compete with each other and when they expand into the public space or public-private space, you know, how, do, how does that work? So I think this is a very exciting time for, for strategists where we have, uh, in some senses, more questions than answers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there is, a, there, 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 there's, there's the question here that I don't fully understand, but I'm just gonna read it and there's a kind of follow on question. So I just wanna make sure, you'll, you maybe will um, get this more, more clearly than I do. So do you think, this is from um, Dr. Javier, Parasat at Bangkok University. Do you think uh, business ecosystems can emerge from a specific people demand for a new treatment, for example? And then James Moore replies, um, you know, I think this question is vital and there's a lot of pent up demand, so to speak, for people to be in ecosystems that take maximizing their creative human potential as a goal. Ecosystems do compete on this basis, in my view. Arm ecosystems treated engineers and companies better than the Intel ecosystem, for example. Also, if a company emerged that could compete on human potential, it could then offer the difference to participants. Yes. Yeah, that's a very interesting area. So a number of different threads there. Let me try and tease some yes. of them apart. So um, for, let's start with the concept of value. So, um, you know, business talks about value creation. Um, uh, we often equate that with um, shareholder returns. Um, 
And when we say value creation, I think what we often mean is value extraction. In other words, there is there is pre-existing demand. Um, you know, can we extract value from that pre-existing demand? Um, now, of course, in a sense, that's value creation. One has to create value in order to extract, um, uh, uh, you know, prices and profits. But um, I think, in a in a more general sense, ecosystems have to think about um, have to have to split that distinction. They they have to think about fundamental value creation, which is the creation of new offerings um, and uh, you know, better ways of doing things. Uh, when I talked earlier about you know, having a big enough problem to point your ecosystem solutions at, I was, I was thinking about the potential for value creation. And that often is, um, and we have to think about then uh, creating value for uh, the, the end users and creating value for the participants. How can we then extract value without competing too much with the participants in the ecosystem upon whom we are reliant. So it's a much more complex equation. Mm -hmm. um, it's co-creation, it's value creation, and it's value extraction. Um, and uh, we have to think about all, all, of, all, all of those things. And the, and the value creation is often in, um, Real well, the value, value creation for the end values. users is often in friction removal. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, often economists talk about ideal <laughs> industries where there is no friction, you know, there's perfect knowledge of products and no intermediation cost and no delay and no rework and no mistakes. Any real business has frictions and some businesses have massive frictions. For instance, in insurance, we regard it as perfectly natural that we don't understand our insurance contracts. We, we regard it as totally natural that the insurance company always will always dispute our claim. We regard it as perfectly natural that a, that a middle manner broker takes um, you know, 10 or 20% margin. Well, these are precisely the frictions that the ecosystem disruptors go after. And then I think um, if I understand uh, uh, James Moore's comment correctly, there is also the creation of enough value, um, relative value, relative to other strategic alternatives for the participants in the ecosystem. And that may become from, from reach, um, uh, that may come from stability, that may come from uh, risk, uh, risk, risk spreading, or it could come from uh, uh, softer factors like how we, um, how we attract and retain um, uh, uh, creative talent, um, especially in the hot areas of, um, you know, AR, VR, um, AI, um, um, you know, uh, full stack kind of platform engineers. I mean, these, these talents are in, uh, in short supply. And then, you know, and then we're seeing actually a new type of ecosystem beginning to address some of those sort of softer opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. So talent management was uh, traditionally was about, um, you know, advertising jobs, um, collecting CVs and assessing people in interviews. Uh, and we know, we know traditionally it was very inaccurate. You know, we had a lot of mishires and, and very expensive and very slow. And um, actually now we begin to see um, uh, uh, externalized platform solutions for mm -hmm. talent and they're gaining traction very, very fast. So I would agree with the spirit of the comment as far as I understand mm -hmm. it. Something I haven't heard you or anyone else mention, but I keep coming back to when you talk about externalizing mm -hmm. of the internal mar talent market to an external, mm -hmm. you talk about friction reducing mm. and therefore things getting done outside rather than inside. I keep coming back to the theory of the firm mm -hmm. that a firm only exists when its internal transaction costs are less than the external marketplace. And now maybe external market transaction costs go down thanks to digital, you know, you know, you know technologies. Is it, is, am, am, is that, is Oh um, yeah, no, I think, I, think, I think that's, that's sort of implicit in everything we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah. I mean, so, so why, I mean, and, and let me just give you some for some dimensions on that. So, ten years ago, um, one of the one of the world, arguably one um, of the world's ten largest companies, was a digital ecosystem. The, the 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 ranking of the world's top companies was dominated by banks and and energy companies, mm -hmm. um, uh, specifically oil companies. Now, um, uh, depending on the the year you pick, last time I looked, it was seven of 10 are digital platforms. That's an incredible shift. In just 10 years, we've gone from, um, you know, from vertically integrated corporations to, you know, externalized um, uh, uh, companies with digital platforms. Such an incredible growth. And it's not just a growth in number, it's a growth in, in, in value captured, uh, share of growth, share of profits. 
Um, so why why should such a thing occur? Um, I, I think it's uh, it, it's not that the idea of ecosystems was. Uh, uh, was 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 new. It's not the one already ecosystems. It it's the fact that these um, these it, it's the fact that the the, the 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 phenomena of the digital revolution, namely uh, cheap, uh, plentiful computing power, um, high bandwidth uh, uh, communications, um, uh, AI, um, um, uh, agile software processes, um, put together, um, allow us to reduce the transaction costs, which were the glue that held economically, that held, that held the, um, uh, the the firm together in the first place. Um, um, now, does that mean that firms will disappear? Um, I, I, I don't think so, but they'll they'll morph uh, very, very, very much. Um, mm. And and so we'll, I think we'll see, um, you know, I think the new norm is grayer boundaries and shifting boundaries. So we'll see mm -hmm. much more happening on the outside. But it's not completely outside because, of course, that which is not controlled can be coordinated. So we'll see different, you know, different zones of, 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 of control. Um, so what remains at the core, I think it is um, the, the, the transaction costs and the implicit knowledge um, associated with coordinating the coordination, if you like. So, mm -hmm. you know, it requires a very um, coherent and, and uh, a married set of processes to to build and operate a digital platform, which is coherent to the, you know, to its thousands of participants. So, um, mm -hmm. so, so in one future of the firm, we, you know, we get reduced down to this sort of role of the role of the coordinator that ironically is able to capture a greater share of value because of um, network effects than maybe even a traditional vertically integrated company. Um, and, um, but on the other hand, I think that's not the end of the story because, um, uh, because this other dynamic of the um, um, of the substitution of routine work or so-called correlative uh, cognitive operations uh, by by algorithms is happening in parallel, um, so fewer people will be required to do that. That raises some very human problem, um, some very sort of uh, ethical issues around um, and social issues around. Well, you know, what will the managers be managing in the in the future corporation? And my short answer to that question is um, the three things that machine learning, at least as we currently know, it will never be able to do. Um, one of them is um, counterfactual thinking or uh, imagination. Um, the second one is uh, empathy. Um, we hum humans prefer to deal with humans or a social species. And the, and the third one is ethics. I think only the humans can say what the, um, uh, you know, what, what are the, what are the values and what is the ultimate purpose of the of the corporations, we we found what human ends do they uh, do they uh, do they serve? So I, I think the corporation doesn't disappear, but the corporation itself is morphing into something. Not not only is morphing into something different, is already morphed into a very different entity than when I started mm -hmm. uh, uh, my my career. Fascinating. Um, so we have uh, far more questions than we have time to answer. I'll just sort of summarize a little bit of what I'm reading and let you kind of leave us with your final thought. There's this question of, you know, could a firm be coordinating ecosystems? Are there ecosystems of ecosystems? Yes. Could um, they, uh, ecosystems help us solve government bureaucracy um, and, uh, and, 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 and help with um, regenerating firms and, and diversity? Um, so I, I don't know how you would Maybe yeah, well, I mean, there or yes, that's kind yes, of what we will uh, yeah, yes, yes, and yes, I think. Um, um, so, uh, we already have ecosystems, of ecosystems. So, um, Alibaba has, uh, um, uh, you know, a master platform and it has, um, uh, on the master platform, um, uh, for instance, a, a payments uh, ecosystem, uh, a satellite ecosystem with, uh, uh -huh. uh, supplies of financial services and computing power to the financial services, and it has a, you know, a cloud computing sub ecosystem. So we already have hierarchical ecosystems, if you like. Um, okay. So that one's already here, not widespread, but the largest players already have this. Um, I think in terms of um, government bureaucracy, uh, yes. I mean, I think um, uh, I, I think that I, I've got. I'm, I'm doing a very interesting. Um, I'm participating in a very interesting discussion at the Long Now Foundation later today, and um, mm -hmm. on the question: Had the founding fathers known about the founding fathers of, of, of America mm -hmm. known about um, AI and ecosystems, um, uh, what would they have done differently? And mm -hmm. um, 
uh, we don't have time to cover the, uh, that in depth, but one of the things they would have done differently is to see that, um, that uh, the, the, the digital capability is something that governments absolutely need to master to, uh, to, for, for many reasons. Um, but one of them is to dynamically respond to these sort of you know, complex collective challenges uh, that we have. And, and lastly, on, um, on, on equality, um, you know, uh, gender equality, for example, and, and diversity is, um, you know, we've talked about it so much in recent years, but large companies have made such minimal progress, if you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, in the top two layers of corporations, um, the proportion of women has increased by 1%. Um, in the largest companies in the last 10 years. So 10 years, well. remarkable, lack of, lack of progress. And I don't think it's because of insincerity or lack of will to solve the problem. I just think that we, you know, it's very difficult to, to conquer implicit biases. So there are companies out there as a company called Pymetrics, for example, that uses um, de-biasing algorithms, that uses machine intelligence and, and, uh, and, and, and neuroscience games to, um, to both higher with lower cost and, 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 and higher predictability, you know, getting the right talent that actually pans out. But most importantly, um, they have a unique proposition around um, uh, getting around human, implicit human biases um, through, the, through, the, through, through the use of algorithms. So there's, there's quite a lot of talk about, the, about algorithmic bias, uh, but ironically, the solution to the algorithmic bias may be algorithms, maybe actually different types of, of, of algorithms. Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, thank you, Martin, so much for being here with us. Uh, we could go on, but um, you know, it's been an hour, and I know that you've got other things to do. And uh, and, um, and and I just want to thank you so much for being here with us and, and sharing your thoughts. Um, thank everyone, you. Fascinating discussion. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs>